Hello everyone, this is Charles here at Valves and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in tube lab number 142, we're going to repair our Wilsonton R8 bias pots, or more accurately, we're going to replace them. And at the same time, we're going to install a mod to ensure that if they ever do fail, we're not gonna melt down our tubes. But first, caution everyone. Electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them, and always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Okay, so we use our R8 to clear tubes for customers. We clear a lot of tubes through it. Every set of EL34, 6550C, and KT88 goes through our R8, so we can check for noise, microphonics, and if they're holding a stable bias. Unfortunately, our bias pots seem to have started giving us some trouble, and I guess it's no surprise. We've got a lot of miles on them right now, so they really don't owe us a whole lot. But they're starting to get noisy, and we're noticing some odd bias fluctuations. So these pots are done, and we can't trust them anymore. It's time to replace them. Replacing something like this is no easy task, though, whenever you can't find the part number. So here's one of the pots that I've already replaced. Let me see if I can get that in focus here. There we go. And there's the, sorry about this. There's the part number. Let me know if you guys can make that out. I sure can't. All I can tell is that this is a 22K pot. Now it seems like some Wilsontons have come with 22Ks and some of them have come with 15Ks and either of those should be fine. Anything I think 15 and above is going to be okay for it. So I managed to find a replacement that is a 20K. And this took a little bit of research, some digging around, some people on forums were having trouble finding a good replacement too that was actually you know reasonably priced. Uh, these guys I think are around five or six dollars US uh, a piece and they're available in quantity. I'm gonna put the part number on the screen and the link to it in the description so you can find them. And these will work just fine. They have the same footprint and um, the correct resistance amount. So we have the pot that we need for the replacement. What about the mod that we're going to do? Well, this one wasn't thought up by me, but it was thought up by Skunky over at Skunky Designs. I'll link to their video below so you can follow along there, or you can follow along with me doing it here. What we're going to be doing is providing a failsafe in case one of these pots fail. The R8 uses what's called fixed bias. What this means is that the amplifier applies a negative DC voltage to the grids of the power tubes to set their operating point. If, for example, you have a worn pot where the wiper breaks on it, and there's no longer a connection from the wiper to the grid of the tube, when you turn your amp on, you won't have a complete circuit pulling the grid down into the negative. And instead, what you're going to get is a red plating power tube. So what Skunky did, and they posted some great schematics over on the site, uh, I'll, um, you can find that through the video that I'm going to link, is they placed a 100K resistor in parallel with the potentiometer. So whenever you parallel two resistors of equal value, you end up having them. So if you have, say, two 10Ks in parallel, you end up with a 5K resistance equivalent. But if the two resistors are of different values, then it's going to uh, affect the total value of each resistor. So if we're running 100K in parallel with 20K, which is the pot that we're going to get in there, that we're going to put in there, we get something like 16.6, which is just fine because like I said earlier, anything 15 to 20 is gonna be okay. So by placing a 100K resistor in parallel with the potentiometer to the grid, we can guarantee that there's always going to be a negative voltage present on the grid. So whenever you turn this thing on, even if the potentiometer is completely removed from the circuit, the grid is not going to be stuck at zero volts. It's gonna to head towards the negative and your tube is not gonna red plate. So that's good, just in case something happens. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in on the board here and we can get to work.
<laughs> okay, well, let's try this again. So I just shot a whole segment where I desoldered this potentiometer right here. Unfortunately, it was just out of frame of the camera. So we're going to have to come back in here and do this again with this one. Thankfully, the amp has four. Let's uh, let's hope I don't go through all four of them trying to get this shot done. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start off with our soldering iron. And we're going to load it with a bit of solder. And I'm going to just make sure the camera's focused in on the right spot here. And the first thing we're going to use is the solder sucker. So there's the solder sucker. And this is just a spring-loaded plunger designed to suck solder off of a joint. So I'm coming in at about 400 Celsius. I'll put the Fahrenheit up on the screen for all of you. There we go. Make sure you clean out the solder from the solder sucker into your garbage can and not onto the floor or your amp. It'll make a real mess if you let that happen. Don't worry about getting all of it here. We're going to get some more in a second. There we go. Hold on a second. That one doesn't want to come out. I think my solder sucker just broke. Oh, good thing we've got more of them. There. Oh, it's no longer ejecting the solder, so I think this one's done. <laughs> okay, well, you can see we've gotten most of the solder off these pads, these leads. Is it loose? Ah, it's actually a little bit loose. Okay. Well, I was going to come in here with some solder work to clean it up, but I don't know if I'm going to need to do that now. What I am going to need to do is try and get this on screen so you can all see this. So I'm going to, while I'm holding the pot from this side, I'm going to attempt to wiggle it out while applying a bit of heat over here. There we go. Anything else? Not quite. Sorry for blocking the camera here constantly. This is a little bit awkward. And see now why Skunky took the board out completely for the shot in their vid. So what I'm doing here is I'm just applying heat to each of the leads and wiggling the pot back and forth to get it to release. And actually, I'm going to put a little bit more solder on my iron. There we go. That's some better conductivity. out a little bit more. Well, I think that's that lead. I think that's that one. Okay, can't be much left here. All right, now's the time for the solder wick. So the way this works is you press it down on where you want to suck up the solder. And what a lot of people don't realize is that it actually helps quite a bit to add a little bit of solder in that's fresh. Because that helps get the wicking process started. So there's that. See how much that cleared out there? I'm going to do it right here too. I get all that. Okay, let's clean up my wick. Okay. 
Okay. See if that pulls out now. Still doesn't quite want to release. Hmm. This is being a little tricky. Oh, there we go. We got one leg completely out. Two legs completely out. And three legs completely out. Finally. Okay. That was a little bit of a challenge, but here's our pot. So now we're gonna take our new pot, this guy right here, and this only goes on one way. Uh, let me get that in focus. So if you're having to bend the leads all up, you know you're putting it in the wrong way. So we want to align the triangle with this. I'm going to put it through on the correct side. And see, I started putting it on the wrong way. Didn't fit. And it's tight enough that you actually don't have to clamp it in or anything. It's just going to sit there on its own to make sure it's sitting down. I'm going to add a little bit of solder paste. And now I'm going to turn the temperature right down to about 300 and let's say 340 because this is a plastic pot and we don't want to put too much heat into it. Make sure to clean the tip of your iron, pre-tin it, and let's go in here and just tack these on. There's one. Two, three. Okay. Now I'm going to come back later with a little bit of alcohol and just clean up all that extra solder paste around there. It's not going to be a big deal if it's left there, but you know, it's just going to look a little bit nicer. So there is our pot installed. Nice and solid, give it a good tug test. That's easy to do. The next thing we want to do is install the 100K resistor. So here's one of them right here, just a little half watt. Now I'm gonna bend the leads of these so that they come down and have a little bit of a hook on each end. And the idea here is that we want to put, let me get my little poker back out. We want to put one end of it from the 100K right here. It'll be the same mirrored on the other side over to the 1.2K right here. So from here to here and from here over to here. And this is going to be our fail-safe resistor. So let's get one of those installed here. I'm going to measure it against the space it's going into. Okay, not a lot of room for a little bend, so we're just going to do a small one. And we're going to try and keep this elevated up just a little bit from the surface. It doesn't have to be much. I'm going to put a little bit of a hook on both sides here, but we need to get one of them in first. 
So I'm going to snip off the excess. So let's go do this. And this. So this is what you're going to end up with, something like that. It's pretty loose right now because we need to get it in here and bent over. There's one. And we're going to bring the other one down. And it looks like we're going to have to bend it over just a little bit. There we go. Okay. So I'm um, still coming in at that lower temperature. I'm going to get some solder on my tip. And let's come in right in here. There we go. So there's our first resistor tagged on, but that's not very clean looking, so I'm going to grab onto the resistor and pull it up so that hook comes back up, and let's just heat that up just a little bit. There we go. That's a little bit better. Now we can bend this over. The tricky part is getting into this side of the 100K. So I'm going to come in on a sharp angle and try and get under the lead of that resistor. There we go. Okay, so there's our little half watt. Do the tug test and clean up any excess leads. Make sure they don't end up dangling around in the amplifier though. go. So there is our mod. We've added in our 100k and we've replaced our pot. So you can go ahead and do that with all of them and then you're going to be good to go. Okay. Let's get this off the bench and show you what came in. Okay, so what did we get in? Well, here is a beautiful example of a Japanese 6GU7. These are, of course, the 6SN7 close equivalents. And these have been one of the most popular versions of the 6GU7 that we've been selling. And we didn't get a, lot, a whole lot of them in to begin with. So getting some more in now is, is really nice. We've got some more in the store right now if you want to go check them out. But I think the more interesting thing with this pile of Japanese tubes that we got in are all the different brands. So just like everything else, you're going to find tubes under all sorts of different brand names. And so I picked out a couple of the more interesting ones here. Here is a Videotron, beautiful red and white box. And... Take a look at this Daltronics for superior service. I like the little atomic service man over here. <laughs> it's pretty striking. Really interesting. I've never seen these guys before. And another one that is new to me is a Philco Starlight. I don't know what advertising campaign this was for, these Starlight tubes, but it made for an interesting looking box. And of course, all three of these were con uh, contained a Japanese 6GU7 in there. So it's another example of how rebranding 
um, is so varied with these tubes, even though the internal construction stays the exact same. Okay. Okay, now if you stay till the end, we've got flat rate shipping of $20 around the world, and we can reach most places with that. But if your order is $150 or more after discount, then the shipping is on us, folks. Stay safe. Have fun. This is Charles from Valves and More, signing off. Cheers, everyone.